both here we thank God that we're meeting today. I mean, you know, we, but we really wish, uh, you know, we could be meeting, you know, face to face, person to person. I mean, uh, hallelujah. Because, you know, <clears throat> frankly, for us, for me, uh, you know, worshipping God, loving God, sharing the word of God, these things are all so very personal to me. Thank you. It's, it's, they, are, they are all actually quite intimate things uh, for us, actually. You know, so how I wish, you know, we, we, we were, you know, face to face. I, I feel weird, you know, uh, trying to uh, share through uh, Zoom. I mean, but I thank God for Zoom. I mean, hallelujah. Uh, you know, um, many of us uh, have not even met, but God has brought us together here today. I mean, I thank God for us. I mean, uh, I want to really thank God for Pastor Sam Kuti and his family, loving family. We were fortunate to uh, meet them and um, fellowship with them, commune with them, and receive the benefits of his ministry into our personal lives for many years. You know, when we were, we were posted in Goa for about five years, we fellowship with him. We received the word of God through him, which touched our lives and uh, uh, blessed us in wonderful ways. And even much later, you know, that was in 2005 to 2009. But much later, even in Bangalore, you know, uh, after 2014, when we again got posted to Bangalore those days, we once again had uh, fellowship. And this family has been a blessing for us. And I know this family has been a blessing for many. And we thank God for this family. Uh, being there now amongst you all and uh, 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 using them to serve God uh, in wonderful and special ways. May God bless this family and may God bless your church. I mean, hallelujah, it is a blessing truly to meet you all, especially today, because we're meeting uh, in fasting and prayer. I mean, the first time we meet, I mean, how, what a wonderful atmosphere. What a blessing it is to meet while we are fasting and praying. Hallelujah. You know, um, we too were actually fasting for the last couple of days. And this today is our third day. We are spending time in fast before God. Uh, why? Because we know that all of God's plans in our lives, the life of a child of God, is materialized, is appropriated through prayer and prayer alone. I mean, hallelujah. Prayer is that medium through which we see and receive the fulfillment and manifestation of God's promises in our lives. I mean, prayer is that hand that stretches out in faith. I mean, Hallelujah. And God really wants us to be praying and pray always. I mean, you know, that the kingdom of God come, that his will be done here on earth. He wants us to be praying all the time. That is why, in fact, you know, the world calls us people as praying people. In Malayalam, prarthi, prarthana, prarthana I mean, Hallelujah. You know, we see in uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 5 and verse 7, that Jesus himself in his flesh, he offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, it says. He prayed. Jesus prayed with intense devotion. He prayed passionately. He even sweat. Blood at Gethsemane in prayer. Why? In order to see the fulfillment of God's plan. I mean, mind you, that plan which was known to him, the, the very plan which was known to Jesus, Jesus had to pray. I mean, so that that plan gets fulfilled. I mean, hallelujah. And he is the author 
and finisher of our faith. I mean, to him is that we look. He is our example for prayer. Hallelujah. So, so today, it's not just in an ordinary prayer that we are we have come together. We are, I'll say, we are together in an ardent prayer, in a passionate prayer, because we have come to this throne of grace today in not just prayer but in fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. I mean, hallelujah. Let me at the outset, first at the outset, let me just bless you all and say, may God fulfill his promises upon each one of you, each one of your families, each one of your children and the church. And may he answer your prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, dear praying brother, praying father, praying mother, God has seen your cry. When you were, when you cried in the middle of the night, God has seen your cry. God has seen you pour out your heart like water before it. I mean, hallelujah. God has seen you, your hands lifted up, pleading for your children. I mean, God has seen it. Ninde Makalude. Hallelujah. Jeeva Rachiku and Jatri Galangalil. Jatri Yamangalil Rudayam Pagarnadu. Ninde Karangal Virti Vichirikinadu. Devam Kandidi. God has seen. Hallelujah. When we approach the throne of grace, let's be confident. For we are at the feet of the one who sees you and me. Hallelujah. I mean, dear brethren, as uh, Pastor briefly said, I served uh, the Navy, Indian Navy, for almost 38 years, long years. I mean, uh, there I was, uh, I served as, a, as an engineer on board ships and uh, on aircrafts as well. But I was also a pilot, so I have flown different types of aeroplanes in the Navy for many, many years. But when, when a pilot is approaching his destination airfield for making a landing, there are many occasions when he faces foul weather, foul weather conditions, which makes, makes landing difficult for him and sometimes even dangerous for him. Thunderstorms and you know, very strong winds, fog. Very poor visibility. Everything is against making a safe land. The pilot can't see where he's going. He has no visual references. He can't understand what is happening with the aircraft. And whether he's doing the right thing, he just can't make up in that situation. So he himself and everyone in the aircraft is in grave danger. When a pilot encounters such a situation, what he does is a pilot decides something. What he decides is he decides to stop looking outside. He decides to keep all his attention, put all his attention inside onto something called an instrument panel. Put all his attention on something called an instrument panel inside. He just decides to stop looking outside. And on that instrument panel, you must have seen on aircraft, every aircraft has, you know, in front of the pilots, there is such hundreds of, uh, you know, instruments and we call that instrument panel, okay? And on that instrument panel, there is one portion, there are a few very specific instruments which are called flight instruments, which tells, uh, tells the pilot as to what is happening with the aircraft. You know, wh whether the aircraft is uh, going the right direction, whether it is, in what speed is it going, 
uh, uh, what is its attitude, whether it is it descending or whether it is ascending. You know, it it tells the the flight instruments. I mean, it is not the whole full instrument panel. There is a, is a small group of instruments which are called the flight instruments. They tell him as to what is happening with the aircraft. And now he puts his whole attention only on that flight instrument. Hallelujah. I mean, and what you know what he does? He just believes what the, uh, the flight instrument says. He just trusts that instrument panel, just that instrument. Even against his own senses and his own feelings. Mind you, you know, when you fly in the air, you know, th there's a three dimensional issue. You, you get disoriented very quickly. He keeps aside his senses, his feelings, and he just believes what the instrument says. And he will just follow what the flight instrument says. And that is called instrument flying. And soon, and soon, you know what happens? Even through the thickest of storms, even through the clouds and the rains and through the fogs and snow and darkness, the aeroplane will glide smoothly in the correct direction. It will reach the correct destination and it will make a smooth and safe land. I mean, just the same way, dear brothers, sisters, in our lives, when we go through unfavorable situations, which puts our plans and even our lives in danger, when we can't understand as to how to go on, when issues of life come against you like storms and winds and waves, which just you know throws you away from your path. Dear children, our loving God has given us a flight instrument. I mean, hallelujah, to fly by, which will keep our lives steady on the righteous path, on the right in the right direction, in the right speed, and make us safe. And smooth landing in the middle of the storm. And that flight in soon is a Bible. It is a word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let us turn our eyes, attention to the scriptures without wasting any more time. Let's turn to the book of Malachi, chapter 4 and verse 2. Malachi chapter 4, it's Old Testament, the last book of the Old Testament, uh, just before New Testament starts. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. As I bring you this word of God, it's, it's our prayer that it brings the presence of God in our midst today, tonight. And, and that it brings the power of God in the midst of us today. As we share, as we bring this, as I bring this word of God in the midst of us today. And and that's a prayer that it invokes faith, that it brings the provisions of God into our lives today. I mean, hallelujah. So I'll read this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I will read a little better version. But for you who fears my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Amen. Hallelujah. In Malayalam it says, In the Namatha Bhayapadam Nigalko, Nidhi Surin. And the Cherigin Kiril, Rogo by Shanti or Kudodi, Ningalum Purapeta, Turtil in the Vedana Pasukadanga Pole, Tulicha. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, today, even though we are uh, uh, together in, in Christ, uh, 
uh, you know, in fellowship in Christ. I really won't be surprised uh, if some of us uh, here are troubled in their minds. Because of all that is happening all around us, in the whole world, in the whole globe, so many fears are being spread. And these fears are hovering around us. And even believers like us are feeling haunted and, you know, shaken. Maybe even some of us feel so vulnerable and are tending to be gripped by fear. All uh, the TV, the news, the WhatsApp messages, the Facebook forwards, and all these forwards and all that that you receive. Oh my. You know, I, I sometimes think it is a good time to truly quarantine yourself. Not from the COVID uh, virus, but quarantine from all this WhatsApp and Facebook rumors and, you know, gossips. Keep away from them. I mean, and instead fill our hearts with whatever is true, whatever is honorable, what is just and what is pure and what is lovely and what is commendable. And, uh, with what is excellent and worthy of praise, as Apostle Paul says. I mean, fill our hearts with the word of hope. Fill our hearts with the word of God. I mean, so in the middle of all that is happening to people across the globe, you know, financial uh, troubles, economy crumbling down, and all kinds of viruses in the air, Let's see what is God in store for his children. Like we read in the scripture, what is God in store for those who fear the name of the Lord? I mean, hallelujah. You know, uh, brothers and sisters, today, you are all listening to me now on Zoom because you all we all have made a choice. You have chosen to fear the Lord, to fear the name of the Lord. You have chosen to trust the name of the Lord. You have chosen to devote and depend on the name of the Lord, dear brothers and sisters. And you have made the right choice. You have not, you know, placed your trust uh, upon Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Because you know that if you lean on this broken staff, on this broken reed, it will pierce into your hands. I mean, hallelujah. Chadanya order kolaya. I mean, that is why we are here together today. I mean, hallelujah. You are standing on the Lord's side. Ni nilkunada Yehovida Pachatan. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like the Levites. Hallelujah. Who chose to be on the Lord's side at the foothills of Mount Hore. Amen. Just like Maria, who chose the best path to be at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. That is the call of Moses. Dear praying brother, dear praying children, dear praying family, hallelujah, hallelujah, dear praying mother, oh mother who is praying with a broken heart tonight, who is crying to God tonight. You too heard that call some years ago. God called you, come, come to me. Each and every one of us, God called us, come, come to me. And that is why you stepped in, out in faith. You heard that call and you stepped out in faith. Even though there were many people who were against you. 
even though there you know uh, many were against your faith even though there were many things absolutely against you resisting it but you still stepped down hallelujah because you heard god's call i mean you know that when god is with you who can be against you you know that when god is with you what can be against you you did not wait to think that you are stepping into a sea i mean ni aadi ennu ni orthilla i mean you did not even consider the depth of the sea that you are stepping into ni adinte aalam endonnu maaranilla i mean hallelujah you did not fear the winds and the storms hallelujah ni tirumalagal kandu ni bhayapettilla i mean just like peter just like peter heard the lord speak the word jesus called him come jesus said come and upon that one word peter stepped into the water and he walked on water i mean and dear children of god the lord did not let him drown he held his hand and walked him all the way i mean hallelujah in the name of jesus in the name that you fear hallelujah in the name that you trust hallelujah in the name that you depend on i pray that may god bless may god lift his hands and bless you and hold your hold your hands and walk you through the storms and the waves of your life situation that you are passing through i mean hallelujah you who fear the name of the lord the name of the lord that is our answer to almost everything in our life not almost everything in our life the name of the lord is the answer to everything in our life because he is the lord over everything that happens what can happen in your life and our life i mean you know when you see in the gospel of luke chapter 8 and verse 22 to 24 we see the disciples were crossing the lake with jesus in the boat jesus was sleeping and came a storm and winds and water kind of filling the boat and their lives were in danger but when the disciples called jesus master we are going to perish jesus arose rebuked the winds and the waves and there was calm there was peace i mean all the forces of nature obeyed him hallelujah in order to deliver his disciples the lord commanded the nature hallelujah and the nature obeyed him i mean because jesus is the lord over every power and force of nature i mean he is the lord over all our circumstances he is the lord over hallelujah every situation that we are through i mean hallelujah they will obey him when he commands for your and my sake i mean hallelujah you know some years ago we were uh, you know posted to cochin those days we were transferred from cochin to goa it was in 2005 2004 2005 it was monsoon season and you know we have to move bag and baggage so uh, you know all our luggage in our home all packed up in boxes and you know we had uh, the uh, truck which was to transport it uh, including we had a dog a dalmatian dog you know uh, delila was her name very precious to us and you know including her we had to transport her from cochin to goa by road and the uh, tr- uh, the truck was waiting and it was pouring rains you know in kerala what happens monsoons and it was just non stop rain going we waited there was no no relief so what we both did we just went inside we held our hands and we lifted our eyes under the hill from where our help comes we also got 
Lord, we, we, we need to send it just now. We cannot delay this anymore. Hallelujah. And you know what happened? Just out of the blue, that rain just stopped. And we loaded everything. We dispatched the truck. The truck went clear of all weather until the rain came back. I mean, hallelujah. Jesus, he is the Lord over every of our circumstances. And he will command his word for you and me. For our sake, he will. I mean, hallelujah. And when we see in the same chapter of Luke chapter 8, when we read further, verse 26, it says, Jesus and disciples, they sailed to the other side of the lake, the other country on the other side, the city on the other side, uh, garrisons. I mean, there was a man in that city who, who, who was processed by demons. I mean, for a long time. Uh, and he was forsaken by all and he was, uh, you know, living naked and he lived in tombs and, uh, uh, you know, he was not in the right mind. When, you know, demons uh, seized him, you know, he, he was, uh, you know, bound by chains and he was guarded by people. But he would just break those chains and he, he was, used to be driven away uh, into the deserts. I mean, hallelujah. When Jesus met him, he commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. I mean, soon we find, hallelujah, he was sitting at Jesus' feet. Hallelujah, the demons gone. I mean, hallelujah, he was wearing uh, decent clothes and he was in the right mind. Hallelujah, I mean, to deliver a man. Hallelujah, Jesus commanded the spirit forces and they obeyed him. I mean, hallelujah. He is the Lord over all demonic, all spirit forces. I mean, hallelujah. He is the Lord over every invisible demonic force, spirits that may try to seize you and me. Over every such force that may put you, your people, your children, may try to put your people and your children in bondage. I mean, hallelujah. Every force that causes harm and shame into your life. I mean, hallelujah, and he will command, and you will be delivered. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, children of God, I was once seized by a demons. I mean, hallelujah. You know, I, I had this acute habit of drinking alcohol. I was to be a smoker, to smoke a lot. Hallelujah. I, 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 I could not shed those, uh, you know, things from my life. I've tried so many times. Every time I stopped, it was only to start all over again. I mean, hallelujah. But dear children of God, it was 27 years ago. One day when Jesus walked into our lives, hallelujah. I mean, he commanded those, hallelujah, demonic forces that seized my life. And they just departed from me. I didn't even have to ma make another, you know, uh, decision or, you know, uh, you know, New Year resolution. No, I just did not take any decision, dear children of God. They just left me. It is 27 years now. He is a Lord. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord that you fear. He is the Lord over every spirit force. Every invisible force, demonic forces. I mean, hallelujah. And the same chapter, as we go on further, Jesus went by, hallelujah, and the, you know, people were just crowding him. I mean, there, but there was this woman who had an issue, who had a discharge of blood for over 12 years. She had spent all her you know, wealth and her living, hallelujah, on doctors, but they could not heal her. She, we find, we see that she pushed through the crowd. She came up from behind. She stretched herself and touched the fringes of Jesus' garment. I mean, hallelujah. And we know the power of God poured into her and she was instantly healed. I mean, hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, all the bodily forces 
I mean, all the forces of bodily sickness. I mean, all the forces of sickness. Hallelujah. Deadly <laughs> or pestilence. Maybe. It may be. But Jesus is the Lord over all of them. I mean, hallelujah. hallelujah. He, he will command your sickness and it will obey. I mean, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will command your sickness and you will obey, dear children. Hallelujah. We still remember it was many years ago. I was, I was in the uh, uh, hospital, in the Air Force Hospital, Bangalore. My whole body was all broken. Bones were broken. My, my interiors were all damaged. I was being posted for a surgery. Hallelujah. I mean, but there, uh, you know, I was troubled. I was suffering a fever. And this fever was just not doing. You can't, uh, 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 they can't, doctors can't take me into surgery unless fever goes. So they put me through the complete range of antibiotics. It went on and on. They used to keep posting me for surgery. Fever still not gone. Again, post me for surgery. Fever still not gone. They went through the complete courses of all kinds of antibiotics. And it was even the 19th day. And there was no hallelujah relief. And they could not do it. They were waiting. I was still bedridden. I, they could not take me, post me for surgery because this fever was running. That was the time when my sister, who was in uh, Chennai at that moment, you may be familiar with uh, uh, one uh, senior pastor, Faith City Church in Kochi. His name is uh, Pastor PR Baby. Okay, he was a friend of ours because we were together in the Navy. And uh, uh, he had come to Chennai for, gone to Chennai on uh, temporary duty, uh, you know, uh, from the Navy, he was the Naval uh, Civilian Wing. So he was there in uh, um, Chennai. He met my sister and my sister shared with him this issue that I am not able to be taken up for surgery. I was in Bangalore and they were in Chennai. And one morning at eight o'clock, they knelt down together in prayer and they sought God's intervention for me. I was far away in Bangalore. I never knew what was happening. But at that time, at that moment, my fever just left. Hallelujah. I was immediately taken for surgery. They did my surgery. They came out. Now I'll tell you, you know, how the, the Lord proved his strength, I'll tell you. Because you know what, when they came out and then more time passed, what the doctors realized is that the, the reason, the cause of my fever was still within me. It was still in my body. Hallelujah. While the cause of fever was still in my body, hallelujah, the fever left me. Hallelujah. Our God, Lord Jesus, He is the Lord over every sickness, dear children. However deep that sickness be, He is the Lord over and he will command his word for you and me. And you and me will be delivered from sickness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And we see in the same chapter, Jesus came to the home of Jairus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Jairus' only daughter was 12 years old. She died. And we see there, Jesus held her hands, the dead hands of her do his daughter. And said, Arise. And we read, her spirit came back, returned to her. She got up at once. Hallelujah. Jesus commanded. Hallelujah. And Jesus revived her from death. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. The name that you fear. The name of the Lord that you fear, dear brothers and sisters. He is the Lord over life and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in the valley of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. He will command for you and me. His power will revive you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It was in 1996 when we were posted in Cochin. My wife Elizabeth. Hallelujah. 
she went through a valley of death experience. I mean, and she was fighting for her life. She was almost dying. She was in my hands, lying in my hands. She was almost dying. She was just going unconscious. And I was prompting her to praise God. And you know what? While she was hallelujah, going through this, you know, into this darkness, she kept praising God. She kept saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. She kept saying praises until she lost her consciousness. I mean, hallelujah, dear brothers and sisters. Soon, God gave her back to me. Revived her and gave her back to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord that whose name we fear. Hallelujah. The, hallelujah. Enda namatya bhayapadunna ningal. Hallelujah. The, the, the name of the Lord that we fear. Oh, he is the Lord of life and death. I mean, hallelujah. For those who fear his name, for those who fear the name of the Lord, the powers of nature will obey. I mean, the visible and invisible forces will depart. I mean, hallelujah. All circumstances, all situations will change. I mean, sicknesses will be healed and your life will be revived. Hallelujah. Can you say, I mean, can you believe and say in faith? Yes. Hallelujah. Dear brothers, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I intend to do now is to pray over the rest of the scripture because time is also important. I mean, I just want to pray over the rest of the scripture. I mean, the scripture that we read. For those who fear the Lord, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And you will go out leaping like calves from the storm. I mean, hallelujah. I mean, right now, you know, as Pastor said, and some of you, we all know, we are uh, all kind of shacked up inside a shed. I mean, I mean, uh, we, we are like in, in, the, in the stall of, of, the, of a car. We are all put inside, you know, in the, within the four walls. We are bound inside. We, we, are, we don't have freedom. To go. We, we, we can't go out and do anything. Hallelujah. We are all inside the stall. I mean, hallelujah. This lockdown in our homes, you know, for us, now uh, this started it's almost 45 days. 45 days we have not stepped out of this place. Almost two months. You know, we are living on the 11th floor uh, 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 of this building. We can see the whole world. We can see the, you know, the whole city. But we just can't step out of home. I mean, we are locked inside. Hallelujah. I believe God has put us inside the storm. Hallelujah. But surely I want you to know what I want to pray is that surely there is a day. Surely there is a day. God is going to open the gates. He is going to lift the doors. And surely there is a day that when we are going to come out of this. I mean, because hallelujah, our God loves us. There are so many actually suffering at this point. There are so many. We are all comfortable here, dear brothers and sisters. But as we speak, if not anywhere else, in India, I tell you the majority about whom none of you and me hear about. The TV never speaks of. The magazines never speak of. The internet will never speak of. Hallelujah. Which is the true India? Which is that 80% of the population of this country. The unheard of people. People who have no voice. Who are truly suffering. More than the COVID. The lockdown has killed them. Hallelujah. I'm sure. We have a loving God. And God loves the world so much. That is why he gave his only begotten son. That none should perish. I mean. I'm sure he will show compassion. His anger will not last forever. He will surely show mercy. And he will open the gates in the coming days. Hallelujah. He will put an end to this pandemic. And we will all come out. Amen. And I want to pray that as you all come out, hallelujah, you go out 
living like calves from the stall. I mean, hallelujah, like calves living. I know how many of you have seen calves, maybe very few of you. But there are maybe some older people who must have seen calves sleeping. Oh, I'll tell you, it's a joy. I mean, you know, cows are, you know, their body structure is not meant for jumping around. They're not, you know that. Cows, how can you imagine cows jumping around? Hallelujah. But if you watch a calf, see how it sleeps, how it springs on its toes. How, you know, just from on standing on the spot, it just jumps up. When it comes of the, you know, out of the stall, when it comes out of the shed, it is just can't resist itself, just jumping around with, you know, it is filled with so much of joy while in the, you know, while in, in, in the shed, you know, drinking uh, from uh, his mother. When he comes out, he will just spring, uh, you know, leap like, you know, anything. I mean, that's how calves sleep. It is unusual. It is not very natural. It is unusual. We are going to pray. It's my prayer that every one of you, dear brothers and sisters, families, children, when you come out of this, you come out leaping, hallelujah, leaping with joy like calves. Hallelujah. That you come out so filled that you cannot stop but leap. And unusually, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's my prayer that you will come out Doing wonderful things, unusual things, miraculous things in the name of the Lord. I mean, hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, but now, now we are inside. Hallelujah, inside. Absolutely, I'm sure you, you all understand. We know that it is God's plan that we be inside. You know, God really doesn't want us to. Uh, you know, be adventurous when it comes. You can't test it. When we know that we ought to be inside, God wants us to be inside. I mean, hallelujah. So I know today, it is God's plan that we are all inside a shed, wherever we are. It is God's plan. I mean, and God's purposes. Hallelujah. You know, he says, I know my plans that I have for you. Oh, God's plans and his purposes are always and every time for our good. Hallelujah. Not for our destruction. Hallelujah. And every time he works his plans so that that good hope of a future that he has placed in your and my heart, he will see that it gets fulfilled. I mean, he works his ways. Hallelujah. His thoughts and his, hallelujah, uh, uh, his plans in a way that he aims to fulfill that good hope that he has placed in your children, in your life. I mean, of a good future. I mean, so God, hallelujah, he has surely a purpose and plan. And that's what I want to tell you. It says, for those who fear the Lord, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its midst. Hallelujah. Nidhi Surin and the Kiril it will, it shall rise. I mean, hallelujah. When we are in this shed today, hallelujah, the sun of righteousness is risen over you. It is risen over your home. It is risen over your family. It is risen upon your children. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, I know as children of God, you know, be it a pandemic, be what, we don't really get, uh, you know, ensnared into, into, into any fear. We, we may not be gripped by fear. Because we have a place to run. To. We have somebody whom we can hold on to. I mean, hallelujah. Let 1,000 fall one side, 10,000 on the other. We have a place to hold on to. We, we will be protected. We, we, unlike the rest of the world, Hallelujah. They have nothing to hold on to. They're helpless. But you and me as children of God, we have a fortress. We have a rock to stand. We have a place to hide. We have a tower to run to. So we will not fear. But the fact remains that in these times, I'm sure every one of you, every one of your families, your people, 
are all scattered all over the globe your uh, you know commitments are scattered over the globe your interests are scattered all over all far away from you beyond your sight hallelujah so when these things are you know far away unknown darkness uncertainty you know tries to bring if not fear worries into our lives it may make you get worried yes god has provisions even for that god has said you know never worry just hallelujah ninde aavashyangal stotrathodu kuda devathodu nu arichaam just by in praises you know just tell god that is all and he has promised uh, you know a peace that passes all understanding upon that issue i mean hallelujah yes but still even as you know uh, people with responsibilities you know uh, uh, servants of god who are committed to serve god in all those areas their worries are likely to rise in these times hallelujah hallelujah but today i want to pray this word over you the sun of righteousness is risen over you with healing in its wings hallelujah i mean you know god commanded just once just once so long ago in the beginning ek hi bar only once otta pravashame devam hallelujah kalpichathullu ennal but even today we saw the sunrise we can see the sunrise beautiful sunrise we can see the beautiful sunset from it. even today hallelujah just one word from god sun rises on time every day i mean never fails god's word never fails and the same word says now while you are in this shed the sun of righteousness is risen over you i mean hallelujah hallelujah same word so know that the sun of righteousness is risen over your family hallelujah and and the rays of light and and uh, hallelujah uh, um, the uh, the light fall upon your life upon your family and now especially pray you know all those areas of your interest where your people are where your mind will wander away and likely to get worried in all those areas of interest it's what we are praying this word upon you to say that the light of god hallelujah shine upon those areas i mean and impart strength hallelujah courage hallelujah peace hallelujah joy i mean into your life into all those aspects of your life in those all those areas of your life which may trouble your mind which may uh, put your mind to worry let the sun shine upon you hallelujah let healing that heals everything in those areas i mean hallelujah that you have nothing to worry that your peace will come upon you and while in this shed i want to say hallelujah that hallelujah you will be filled with a joy with a spiritual spiritual joy beyond your understand hallelujah that you are filled while in this shed that on that day when you come out of this shed you will leap with joy i mean this is the time to fill this is the time to fill and god intends to fill you dear children fill your family fill your children in his spirit hallelujah hallelujah praise god amen hallelujah so while in this shed there is one advice i really want to share we know how much of light can fall upon you how much of light can fall upon your your life purely depends on how close you are to the source of light i mean the closer you are the closer you draw near to the sun of righteousness greater the light that will come upon you when you are inside a tunnel and you want to look at the exit if it is at, at a distance you will see the exit the opening as a small spot of light hallelujah but if you draw near to that exit when you go closer to the exit that spot of light 
will keep enlarging will we keep and will become bigger and bigger and bigger until the moment hell you the whole you will be immersed in that light this is the time dear children it is god's will and plan that you and me are in the shed today hallelujah it is his hallelujah purpose that he wants to fulfill in our lives at this moment and he wants to fill us with his light with his joy with his uh, hallelujah strength and peace and hallelujah uh, uh, provisions in our lives now hallelujah i mean so it it should be the desire of our heart to draw near to him. we ought to draw near to him now this is the time to draw ever close to your father i mean hallelujah do everything that you can to draw near to him at this time in this difficult hour do everything you can to draw near i mean hallelujah and you know you can do it only if you spend time in prayer to draw near to him spend time in prayer i mean it's easily said you know pray but i must tell you uh, you know we, we will just share from our you know don't take it as the time uh, how much time do we have this time to take this little okay we'll just wind up quickly okay dear brothers sisters okay uh, you know um, in our lives you know i tell you we we have a plan to pray we have a time we have a place we have a poster we kneel down to pray it will make you pray it will strengthen your prayer to draw near to you this is the time to in order to draw near you must be reading and meditating the word of god even in that it's easily said everybody says i read but i'll tell you what what we do is we have a plan without a plan nothing gets accomplished nothing worthwhile gets accomplished so we have a plan we have a plan for a week what to read we have a plan for a month what to read we have a plan for the year what to read we have a place where we sit and read we have a time slot we have kept to sit and read i mean i'm not going further but i'm saying let me just conclude to say you do everything that must be done to draw close to him hallelujah i mean hallelujah in fasting in prayer in reading the scriptures in meditating the word of god hallelujah praise lord get as draw close to him i mean this is the time for that and surely i mean hallelujah god will hallelujah uh, bring us out of this in glory hallelujah every one of you hallelujah you know there is a river hallelujah that flows hallelujah hallelujah and which, which will you know oh, um, uh, strengthen the city a river that flows i mean hallelujah hallelujah we don't need to fear at all i mean and wherever this river uh, reaches wherever it reaches hallelujah everything that moves will be revived hallelujah ee nadi chennu cherunnadu okay jeevikuna chalikuna sagala pranigalum jeevichirikkum amen it's my prayer it's our prayer that this word let us hallelujah uh, i we together we thank god for this church for accepting us just as we are we are actually quite ordinary people only standing because of Christ would never deserve when we look back when we remember the, the rock from which we were you the quarry from which we were cut we know that we never deserved anything in our lives we were absolutely against god in our lives but he saved us and that is the reason why today we are here. and this privilege of you know fellowship with you all and the past to the family and each one and each and every one of you we thank god for you it's our prayer that god blesses you hallelujah thank you thank you pastor thank you church